Okay, so um, I always used to say that this was my uh, most difficult speech of the year because, uh, and people say, oh, is it, a, is it a hostile audience? I said, no, they're, they're a great audience. They love everything about it, but the problem is they know more about Wikipedia than I do. So that always makes it very difficult. Um, so uh, over the years, my talk has become more and more uh, ceremonial, more and more traditional, um, and there's a lot of fun things that we do. And we're going to start off um, with uh, thinking about how long people have been editing Wikipedia. And so I want everybody to stand up if you were editing Wikipedia by 2015. So if you edited this year or before, then everybody stand up, which means basically everybody stand up. <laughs> You've never edited? At least once. And uh, so now stay standing up if you started uh, 2014 or before. Ooh, not many people sat down. 2013 or before. Okay, we're losing a few now. So stay standing up if you edited in 2012 or before. Wow, this is getting to be quite a lot of people. 2011. Ooh, got a lot of old timers here. 2010. 2009. 2008. <laughs> 2007, 2006, 2005, I'm seeing a little bit more gray hair in the audience now, <laughs> 2004, 2003, <laughs> wow, <laughs> 2002, Oh, a handful of people I know. Woo. James in the back. And finally, uh, 2001. 2001, I think it's Florence. Was there any other? Florence and me, we're the old timers now. But I also want to uh, do something new that I've not done in the past, and uh, this, is, this is, I'm going to just do two years, uh, and this is not how long you've been editing, but how many Wikimanias you've attended. Uh, so how many people here have attended at least five Wikimanias? Could you stand up? Great. <clears throat> and how many have attended at least 10 Wikimanias? This is the Decade Club. So this is the, woo! So I, I used to do this, this countdown, and it was always fewer and fewer people who had attended all the Wikimanias, and I just thought, uh, from now on, we actually should do the Decade Club, the five-year club and the Decade Club, so it's a growing club every year, because I'm sure there's quite a number of people out there who are eight or nine years, and there's also will be people who were with us in some of the early years but missed one here and there um, who just will come back uh, pretty soon. So one of the things in terms of the state of the wiki um, is that this year we've gotten um, a couple of really amazing uh, pieces of formal recognition, major uh, European awards. Uh, one of them, uh, quite well known of course in the Spanish speaking world, but well known globally is the Princess of Asturias Award. Uh, it's amazing. The thing that I really am happy about this award is that we won uh, in the category of international cooperation. And um, people often think of uh, Wikipedia as a technology story. Sometimes they, they get the idea that it's a story about knowledge, but very seldom are we recognized for being a group that really promotes international cooperation, which is obviously uh, very, very visible here at Wikimania. Um, we've, given, we've been given as well another very prestigious prize, the Erasmus Prize. This one is awarded by the King and Queen of the Netherlands. Um, again, a very great honor. And um, for me, one of the fantastic things, and all, everybody who's a Wikipedian will have encountered this, one of the fantastic and annoying and fun things about working in Wikipedia is how many people you run into who have a conspiracy theory. <laughs> We're always coping with crazy conspiracy theorists who are telling us crazy things. And I say, you know, we have respect for everyone. Let's help the conspiracy theorists. Here's my conspiracy theory. <laughs> the Dutch monarchy secretly controls Wikipedia. Now proof, 
Of course there's proof, even if some of it is a little bit citation needed. First of all, Jan Bard is Dutch. He also wears the royal family color orange. Here's King Willem Alexander, also wears orange. Uh, then we come to our new chair, Patricio. So the theory has a few weaknesses, right? He's Argentinian. Orange? Well, bear with me, there's proof. I photoshopped him <laughs> to be orange. And also Queen Maxima of the Netherlands is wearing orange and is also Argentinian. Coincidence? You decide. Okay, well that's enough fun. Uh, now I get to the, the, the meat of what I wanted to talk about this year. Um, one, of the, one of the big issues that faces uh, Wikipedians, and something that we all take very seriously, is the issue of freedom of expression. And I wanted to talk a little bit about freedom of expression uh, and some of the things that the Wikimedia Foundation is doing, some of the things we in the community are doing and facing. Um, so one of the first things that I encourage everyone to do is to go and take a look at transparency.wikimedia.org. Uh, this is the number of requests from governments uh, to uh, modify or remove content from Wikipedia. Um, as you can see, um, our legal department is uh, not someone you want to tangle with. The number of requests granted, zero. Woo! Now, this is something that, that, this is something that people in this room will understand, I think, better than people outside the movement. People outside the movement who hear this might think, Wikipedia never takes anything down. You, people post horrible things and they refuse. That's not at all. One of the reasons this number is so low is that we as a community are so responsible for making sure that we have reliable sources, that crazy stuff doesn't get put into Wikipedia. So the best way if somebody's got a genuine complaint is to come to the community and say, here's a problem, and we always try really hard to fix it. And if, if they don't like it, even after we fix it, it's almost never the case that the foundation would step in to do anything about it. So far, 0.0%. Uh, I'm really, really proud of that, and Jeff, really proud of the legal team uh, for <clears throat> their approach. So when we think about uh, governments uh, trying to manipulate Wikipedia, uh, here's what people outside Wikipedia fear. Most people assume that it would be just very easy for uh, government to come in uh, and edit Wikipedia and just and, and basically control the information in Wikipedia simply by editing. But we all know this is seldom true. It's very hard to sneak things by the community. Obviously, there's always a little bit of noise around the edges, not just from governments, but from PR companies and things like this. But by and large, we understand this problem, and it's not a super terrible problem. It's something that we have to always be conscious of and grapple with. What I'm more concerned about is, is three kinds of cases. Um, and I'm going to give two specifics. And one is more of a philosophical thing for us all to reflect on. So one, um, obviously, filtering and blocking. And China is the biggest example of that. And I'll talk about that in some detail. Uh, another is intimidation or pressure on individual Wikipedians. Um, there are many cases I could discuss around the world. But there's one that I want to talk about in particular, Venezuela, uh, just because it's a, <clears throat> it's a classic type of example that uh, we need to think about and we need to think about how we can strongly support our Wikipedia volunteers. Uh, and then the philosophical problem, um, which is if the government controls all the reliable sources in a language, or reliable sources, uh, or if some users are excluded, what does that mean for Wikipedia? So first thing I want to talk about is China. Uh, China, of course, is we have had long-standing issues with blocking and filtering. Uh, we were completely banned in China for about three years. Then uh, we were open in China for quite a long time. Um, I visited the minister in China twice. He's visited me in San Francisco a couple of times. And we got to a kind of a standoff position where they filtered certain pages. Um, we, of course, will never cooperate in that filtering, uh, but we can't stop people from filtering their own network. Um, and you know, it seemed fairly stable. Um, and, but recently, we were blocked again, uh, completely blocked in China. Uh, and because we've moved to HTTPS everywhere, actually the, the process of negotiating with the Chinese government to get unblocked, I believe, is going to be more difficult. So uh, I'm really busy next week, but the next week is devoted to basically beginning the process of outreach, uh, working with the foundation and the foundation legal department uh, to try to make the proper approach to the Chinese authorities to see what we can do about this. Um, 
well, we'll see what we can do, but I'm not sure. Uh, so that's a really interesting problem and one that I fear is going to become a bigger problem in other countries um, in years to come. Uh, I'm going to talk about Venezuela. Um, <clears throat> and this is just an example. This is one user um, who gave permission for me to talk about his story. Um, but I think it's illustrative. There are other Wikipedians around the world who face similar types of problems. Uh, so this user is an active uh, participant uh, in many protests throughout 2014, 2015, uh, helped to draft the English Wikipedia article on the pro protests and began adding articles on Venezuelan political figures from January. Um, is a photographer, took this picture in particular. Um, and after he began covering this information uh, by updating photographs of the photographs uh, of the protests, uh, et cetera, uh, he began to receive anonymous threatening calls, first to the father, uh, then to him, saying, you don't know who you're playing with. So he canceled his phone and went to another country. Uh, then he was told that his passport has been canceled, and so he was unable to return home. Uh, and it's all very complicated. He can't return home, and he probably can't stay, so he's in a bit of a situation at the moment. Uh, he only manages to talk to his family over Skype. Uh, they're very careful not to discuss any political issues because he's concerned about uh, reprisals against his family. The important thing to understand about this user is he's not a particularly political person. He wasn't using Wikipedia to organize protests. He was merely documenting in a neutral manner uh, the facts on the ground there. These are the kinds of problems that some Wikipedians face, uh, and we as the community uh, really um, need to help people like this in whatever small ways we can. One of the things we need to do is think about security, uh, think about helping people find new usernames, all the kinds of things that they are asking us to do, uh, we should try to help if we possibly can. The next thing I wanted to talk about is, is a bit of a philosophical problem, and this is something that I think a lot about and I encourage you to think a lot about. Unfortunately, I'm raising questions for which I don't have any very good answers. So Wikipedia always relies on high quality third party sourcing. Uh, this is one of the bedrock principles of Wikipedia is uh, citation needed. We want to find good sources. But in some places, the governments get control of all the sources in that language. So uh, our Venezuelan friend I was just talking about was talking about how the Venezuelan government controls now almost all the newspapers and all the television stations. But they don't control the entire Spanish language media, of course. And so that is a lesser ability to control what happens. But in some languages, um, the language is only spoken within one country, so that all of the sources that it, the community finds easy to use um, are corrupted, uh, basically. And this becomes very difficult. And so then it becomes necessary, if the community wants to write good quality material that's neutral, to use sources from outside the country, which means outside the language. But obviously, for Wikipedians, uh, in some places, that's very, very difficult. Fewer people, you know, a small subset of people will be able to get the English language press and, and so on. And oftentimes, the, the, the foreign media, where, wherever you are based, they may cover the large issues, but they may not cover local politics and local issues, which are incredibly important. And so in those cases, the only sources that are available are apparently reliable sources, but we know that they are uh, controlled and one-sided, and that's really problematic, and I don't think that we right now have a really good solution for that. The other thing is that if some users are excluded through a filter um, or, a, or a block outside the country or inside the country, then bias of other users becomes more prominent. So uh, my favorite example of this, and it's actually one of the arguments that I uh, will be using with the Chinese government is, if the Chinese government blocks Wikipedia, then the only people who can edit Wikipedia are people who are outside of China which inherently means that the perspective of the Taiwanese, the Hong Kong, the Chinese diaspora everywhere becomes the dominant perspective because almost no one can edit from within China. This is a problem, and probably a problem that is negative for China. So one of the things that I always tell them is, you aren't just blocking information from coming into the country, you're blocking the Chinese people from speaking to the rest of the world, and that's a really uh, critical thing. But it does mean that in places where there are filters, um, it means that some subset of uh, potential users is not allowed to edit, others are, and there may be some systemic bias in where they're coming from that may be hard to correct. Now this one, I think the community, by being thoughtful and cautious, can deal with that. Certainly, I would trust the, uh, the Taiwanese and the Hong Kong uh, Wikipedians to be careful to think about the Chinese uh, mainland perspective as they're writing, but interest in what people are uh, find fascinating and worth writing about will be different and it does change the character of the work. And so I think this is very, very interesting. So 
For me personally, <clears throat> I've decided I'm stepping up my personal efforts uh, in the area of freedom of speech. As many of you may have heard, uh, earlier this year, or actually it was last December, uh, I went to Dubai to give a speech, and they surprised me when I arrived and they said, well, you and Tim Berners-Lee are uh, sharing a prize, uh, $500,000 each, uh, the knowledge prize. And um, I said, oh, wow, that's amazing, and uh, sort of started to think about it. I'd never even anticipated something like this happening. Uh, and then I started looking at the human rights record of Dubai, in particular freedom of speech, in particular their treatment of <clears throat> certain online media. And I realized I couldn't, this was coming directly from the leader of Dubai. I felt I couldn't in good conscience uh, keep this money, uh, but I also couldn't in good conscience give it back to someone I think is a very bad person. Uh, <laughs> so what I decided to do um, is to set up the Jimmy Wells Foundation for Freedom of Expression. Uh, so I put all the money, uh, I'm putting all the money into the foundation. Um, and obviously $500,000 is not a lot of money. Um, I, you know, I'm not, it's not the Gates Foundation, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to try to have some impact. Uh, the basic uh, concept uh, and the mission uh, is twofold. So one, in many, many cases all around the world, uh, I, people contact me sometimes and they say, oh, Jimmy, they're about to pass this terrible law um, that's against freedom of expression. It will impact our work as Wikipedians, or it'll impact bloggers. Um, can you write an editorial for the newspapers? They'll print what you say, and it could have some influence on raising awareness of the issue. And in the past, typically, um, I've, I've ha tried to do it sometimes, but I've mostly had to decline because I don't have time to research the latest um, law in Australia or something like this, right? It becomes very difficult. So now um, I will have time to do that sort of thing. Uh, I've hired um, Orit Koppel. She could stand up so you'll know her. Uh, she's a human rights lawyer uh, based in London. Uh, this is also her third uh, Wikimania, so she's been uh, well known to the, to the uh, Wikimedia community in, in Israel for a while. Um, and, uh, ooh, a couple. Oh, and, the, and then the other, so the one thing we want to do is sort of uh, give me the ability to have a lot, louder voice and to actually speak on these issues. Uh, and the other thing is to actually uh, provide assistance, uh, legal assistance, um, um, shining a light on, uh, raising awareness, helping coordinate other NGOs who are doing work for people specifically in the digital space. So bloggers who are being persecuted, people who are arrested for something political they said on Twitter, but importantly, uh, and obviously nearest and dearest to my heart, is Wikipedians in trouble. Um, again, $500,000 is not enough to fully fund massive uh, legal cases, but it is enough for me to be able to help people find resources um, and to have someone um, or two people who can actually be full-time on trying to assist. So um, one of the things I want to do is ask for your help. Um, because a, a lot of times I hear about a story and I realize I only heard about the story six months after it happened. Um, and I just want you to know that I'm here to hear these stories um, and I have a little bit of resources to be able to actually focus some attention um, and to help. One of the problems in this area is that information is hard to come by. Um, it's very difficult sometimes uh, to understand what's going on. Uh, in preparation for this speech, I had heard some good things about uh, Farsi Wikipedia. And obviously, uh, in Iran, uh, there are some issues around freedom of expression. Uh, there are some very sensitive topics. And I'd heard that the Farsi Wikipedia does a really good job of maintaining neutrality um, and being very, very careful about these things. So I decided to go and, and look at one of the entries. I just was doing this the other day, so I didn't have time to actually ask a Wikipedia to help me. I went to the Farsi Wikipedia, uh, this is the entry for homosexuality, and I thought, well, I'll just try and get the gist of what's going on here. So I, uh, I ran it through Google Translate, which is never a good idea. Let me actually zoom in a little bit so we can read this. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Gay provided the English word for gay men usually have the word lesbian or whales. <laughs> whales? Lesbian or whales? Uh, Google Translate, you keep using these words. I do not think they mean what you think they mean. So the point is, uh, when I hear about a, a case involving freedom of expression, um, it will be really helpful to me uh, to know some people who are interested. Just you know, get in touch with us and register your interest so that when we hear about a case, we can come and ask you. You know, because sometimes you hear, oh, it's terrible, this blogger has been arrested in such and such a country. 
then when you really start to dig into the case, you realize uh, they were actually making uh, violent death threats. Okay, that's not the kind of case I'm interested in. It's very hard for someone outside to really understand what is somebody being persecuted for and does it make for a really good solid case uh, to make public. Um, so now we come to, uh, that's the end of my freedom of speech part for the most part, and we come back to the ceremonial part. And this is my award that I give every year for Wikipedia of the Year. Um, in 2014, those of you who were here, who were here last year in London, uh, you remember I, I put up and I said, future process for Wikipedia of the Year. I said, look, I've made this page, and we're going to have a community consultation. We're going to think about how this award is given instead of me just making it up out of my head every year. Um, and so what happened is, here's the same page yesterday. I got one comment. Uh, and, uh, and that's my fault. I didn't actually carry on and actually set up a community process. So I would love to have some people uh, get in touch with me and help me through that process. There's a couple of interesting things about this, though. I got a few emails from people saying, look, one of the problems is if we just have a big vote on Meta, uh, the biggest problem is uh, the process should highlight contributors in small projects. Um, that's been the tradition, and it's something that I would want to continue. And the process shouldn't just be a popularity contest. Uh, we don't want the winner of this every year to be uh, you know, a popular editor in English Wikipedia because they can get the most votes. So when I say a community process, I don't, I'm not even sure what I mean by that. Um, I think probably it might mean a volunteer committee or people appointed by me or, or partly by the chapters found, I don't know exactly, where people can quietly deliberate and really think this through and make choices according to a set of principles that aren't just about popularity, they're about highlighting interesting people and doing interesting things. So we'll see what happens next year. I might just be up here telling you what I thought up um, or maybe we'll have done some kind of a process. But for this year, this just comes directly from me, and I'm going to tell a little bit of history before I uh, give the award. Uh, this is Ignatius Kung Pin Mai. Um, he was a Catholic leader in China um, and uh, a, a leader of the Catholic Church there. Uh, and he was imprisoned along with many priests and pr church leaders in 1955 and uh, was only released in 1986. Uh, so. I'm not a Catholic, but I think that people should be able to um, express their religious beliefs and to work in a religious manner uh, unmolested, and so I have a lot of sympathy for this case. But what's really interesting is that um, there's been a long tradition, and it's very rare, uh, in which the Pope who chooses the cardinals of the church, which are the church, the ultimate body of uh, who choose the next Pope and so forth, uh, they, he can make someone a cardinal uh, in a process called in pectore. Uh, which means he makes someone a cardinal, but he doesn't tell anyone. He doesn't name the person. And the main reason he does this is if the safety of that person would be put at risk if they were named publicly. So he made him a cardinal. Uh, this guy, when he got out of prison in 86, he eventually came to Rome, and the Pope told him in 1989, oh, by the way, uh, you're a cardinal. Just didn't mention it. <laughs> so um, for 2015, uh, I learned of a, of a remarkable case of a Wikipedian, but to name this person would put them into danger, and I've been asked not to do it. And so the Wikipedia in the year 2015 is in pectore, one of our brave, heroic colleagues, who I hope in a few years' time I can tell you the whole story. So. <clears throat> so now I'm... Wikipedia of the Year is always just one award, uh, it's one person, it's always a very, very difficult choice. Um, and so I just wanted to go through a few other uh, people and recognize and honor them. Uh, the first one is, a, is in memoriam. Uh, so I, I, won't, uh, I can't possibly begin to pronounce the name. Uh, I know there's some people here from Malayalam uh, Wikipedia, uh, but uh, Babuji, I can pronounce. Uh, I heard the story of Babuji. Babuji was born in 1938. Seven decades later, in 2008, was his first edit to Wikipedia, so 70 years of old. And over a few years' time, he created, uh, started and expanded in a major way 1,935 articles. He uploaded 350 images, and he passed away earlier this year. Uh, and he was quite a father figure to the Malayalam community, and I thought he deserved some recognition. So a round of applause, please. <clears throat> And then I've got um, a couple of uh, honorable mentions. Uh, these are people who are doing amazing uh, work uh, in Wikipedia, again, who deserve uh, some recognition. Uh, here we have Susanna.
And I think she should come, come up on stage. I'm sure she's in the room somewhere. Susanna, can you come up? Oh, yes, here she comes. Now, if you, um, if you look at her name, you might think I'm giving this award on the basis of having the most number of consonants in a row with no vowels. Uh, so I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her uh, last name. Uh, but I've got a little bit written up here. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Susanna. How do you pronounce it? McCurchin. Just. It's like it's, 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 like it's written uh, from Armenia. Susanna has been instrumental in organizing the Armenian Wikipedia community and initiating off-wiki activities, uh, including a massive Amer uh, awareness campaign under the slogan, One Armenian, One Article. She's organized national wiki conferences and a very successful program called Wikicamp. Um, <laughs> Wikicamp is a summer camp for youth, uh, which includes intensive training and contribution to Wikipedia and Wiktionary. Uh, she's innovative, collaborative, collaborative, and collegial, and a model Wikipedia. Congratulations. We got one more honorable mention, uh, Sutip Gill. And I, I believe he's here as well. And could please come to the front. Here he comes from way in the back. Uh, Sutip is one of the most active Punjabi editors. Uh, his father, Charan, whom he recruited, is the most active editor. Um, <laughs> is your father here? No. <laughs> he should have come. He might have beaten you for the word. <laughs> uh, he's been organizing and teaching workshops on university campuses, encouraging his peers to contribute to the Punjabi Wikipedia, which serves 100 million speakers. So this is a major language. Uh, Punjabi Wikipedia was growing very slowly for several years, uh, but Sadeep and his effort, directly and indirectly, have made the Punjabi Wikipedia the fastest growing Indic Wikipedia in the past year, growing 80% in active editors over the last year. It's amazing. He's recently completed a series of 100 new articles in 100 days, part of the uh, 100 Wiki Days hashtag initiative of personal challenges, and adding coverage to Punjabi Wikipedia about uh, traffic from, oh, I can't even pronounce that word, Teotihuacan? That sounds Mexican. Is it Mexican? <laughs> Great, the pyramids. Uh, through Judith Butler and Popeye the Sailor Man. A very important topic. Uh, stream of consciousness. Uh, his dream is to in unite the Punjabi Wikipedia with the Western Punjabi Wikipedia, uh, two wikis sharing one language uh, separated by a different writing script. And I think that's a fantastic idea. So, uh, honorable mention to Sanjeev. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Great. And that's all for me. Thank you.